On to learning target 27 now, which asks us to calculate the work performed by the net force or by each of the forces that make up the net force on an object that undergoes a, that should be specified, change in speed or kinetic energy. So the problem we're going to look at here is uh, one where we have, what else, a box on a, uh, a surface. We're going to push a box because I know how you love to push boxes around in these problems we'll apply some force that we call Fa. And then there's going to be a frictional force, which is just given to us of 15 newtons. Some of these problems you might see um, you know, using the, the weight of that box to find the normal force. And then they'd give you the coefficient of friction, and you have to solve for the force of friction. But I've simplified this one a little bit and just given you the 15 newtons. We're also given that it has a starting speed of V0 uh, equals 0 and an ending speed of 5 meters per second going uh, to the right here in the direction of that applied force. So three questions we're asked to answer here. The net work in this case is what, the work done by friction is what, and the work done by the applied force is what. So to start out with, uh, the net work we know has to equal the change in kinetic energy. So net work is going to be, uh, that's one-half mv squared minus one-half mv naught squared. So that's just the final kinetic energy here minus the initial kinetic energy there. So the net work is going to be one-half times five times five squared. And uh, I've got my units here. Uh, five kilograms times 5 meters per second, that gets squared, minus, now the initial velocity here was 0, so this whole term is just going to go to 0. So the net work then is going to be 25 times 5, <coughs> so 125 times a half is 62.5 joules. We know that that total work is done by these two forces, the 15 newtons to the left and the applied force to the right. So uh, we can figure out how much force each, or how much work each one of these forces did and add those two together and that should give us a number of 62.5 joules. Or we can say that the total of the work done by A, which we can't calculate directly since that force isn't given to us, and the work done by this 15 newton force, which we can calculate, those have to be equal to 62.5 when we add them together. And we can use that to solve for the work done by force A. So, to do that, we'll now calculate the work um, done by the friction, which is going to be equal to R F cosine theta. And in this case, R is uh, not given to us. Uh, shoot. Well, let's pretend that I had remembered to give that information here. We'll say R is 10 meters. Okay, so 10 meters for our, our value for uh, the distance traveled, and that'll be to the right. Uh, so that'll be 10 meters times our force from friction, which was 15 newtons, times the cosine of, well now we need the angle between the R vector and the frictional force vector, which is going to be 180 degrees, or pi radians if you prefer. Now 180 degrees when we do the, uh, oops, uh, when we do the cosine of 180 degrees, we just get negative 1. So this would be negative 150 joules. So that's one answer here, another answer here. And then last up, we know that our net work has to be equal to the work done by A plus the work done by friction. So in this case, the net work was 62.5 joules. Work done by A is unknown plus the work done by friction is negative 150 joules. So 
so we can calculate the work done by A, and that gets us 212.5 joules.